they end up murdering his wife. Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. Right off the bat, let's just say this out front, perhaps a little bit of remorse would have been appropriate. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael J. Migliori. I am your man on film. And today we're going to talk about a film recently released on Amazon Prime called Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. The film is a particularly special kind of awful film, and we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, first off, let's talk about Tom Clancy and the brand. The Tom Clancy brand has become synonymous with the sort of Call of Duty-esque military fan fiction. And it's unfortunate that Michael B. Jordan has been roped into being the lead for this poten potential film franchise instead of a new Superman, as we all wish he would have become. Before we get too far into it though, let me go and talk a little bit about Tom Clancy himself and Tom Clancy the brand and what has become over the past few years. Without Remorse is a very American sort of action film. Think Delta Force, think Rambo, Commando. Think Commando a lot because there's a lot about this film just felt like it was a very much a repurposed Commando for the bottom eight, modern age. Tom Clancy was a military novelist that hit his stride in the 80s, early 90s, writing Cold War-esque military fiction. His books provided a political intrigue through kind of a military insider's perspective. The strongest route that we have from his books that have persisted up until now is the character of Jack Ryan, who's been played by Harrison Ford, Alec Baldwin, Ben Affleck, Chris Pine, and most recently John Krasinski in also the Amazon Prime series. And the tropes you get a lot with the Tom Clancy books are these kind of like ex-military intelligence people that are rooting out corruption from within the government and the Cold War machinations. Uh, very not transparent, very kind of cloak and dagger Cold War machinations and kind of bringing them to the forefront and solving and getting to the bottom of a lot of these with a very idealistic kind of Boy Scoutish uh, moral compass. And Tom Clancy became famous in Hollywood when his books started to become adapted into feature films like The Hunt for Red October, Clear and Present Danger, Patriot Games. Eventually that fame and that infamy of the Tom Clancy brand began to extend outward into video games in the mid 90s, mid to late 90s, with games like Rainbow Six. Uh, recently we have games like The Division. The interesting thing about all of this is Tom Clancy passed away in 2013 and many of the products that bear his brand has had little to no actual involvement from him. Sometime throughout the course of his career, he found out that he could sell his name as this brand to sell other medium like film, TV, video games. And that sort of brings us to Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. The basic summary of the film is that Michael B. Jordan is part of an elite SEAL team sent on a mission to rescue a military prisoner from radicals in Aleppo, Syria. During the mission he's discovered that the CIA has been lying to him and that the true nature of the enemy and the true nature of the mission is to extricate a hostage from some Russian black market arms dealers. When the team returns home, they begin to die one by one under suspicious circumstances. It turns out that they're being hunted by a Russian hit squad. When the Russian hit squad finally reaches the house of Michael B. Jordan, they end up murdering his wife and unborn child. Jordan himself is injured and left for dead and eventually ends up in a coma with the very slim chance of survival. But just as any good action hero does, he has the will to survive against all odds. And by some miracle, he makes a recovery and the first thing on his mind is, who do I go after? These films are made for a specific audience. Uh, I go on, I talk a lot about that, about kind of like the audience that specific medium is designed for or made for a lot in a lot of my videos. And it's because it's a very, it, it marketing 
and specific target marketing is very important, especially for to sell something like this. Because the quality of this film, you know, apart star star power aside and you know budget aside, it is not a good film. The writing is very bad. The story is very very tired and old. It does the crime of just recycling so many bad action movie tropes. But the film appeals to a slice of America. The appeal of the Tom Clancy brand had always been kind of like this poli-sci military fiction intrigue with kind of like this element of realism that comes from the insider's perspective. Tom Clancy was a military novelist. He had some general idea of the inside workings of how the military works and how the intelligence community works. So it was kind of, it appeals to people that have been in that industry, that have been in that kind of environment. Somewhere that went wrong though. The more recent films with bearing films and video games bearing the Tom Clancy brand have been more what I like to call the kind of Call of Duty armchair general military fantasy fiction. And Without Remorse leans heavily into that area. The main protagonist is portrayed as the exaggerated, fetishized, idealist American soldier, the true patriot with sober judgment, righteous morals, and finely tuned skills. All the perceived positive Rambo traits without the complexities that it is the indicator of a realistic and interesting character. The film is military cotton candy, all fluff and sugar with no nutritional value. An argument could be made that the film is a commentary about how the government and intelligence communities use foot soldiers and specifically the military branch of the government to kind of do their bidding across the world and spread the influence of these nefarious CIA heads. The problem that this specific film runs into is that there isn't enough substance in the actual film to get that point across. Many of the things that happen in the film happen in a very matter-of-fact, cause-and-effect kind of way, and the intrigue isn't really there. You get a sense for who the villain is in the film right from the jump. It's not very complicated. It seems very obvious and it is very generic. The only real strength that this film has going for it is Michael B. Jordan. As predictably stale as the narrative is in this film, he has a great presence. And that's been his, what has carried him and has made his career in the last few years. He has this wonderful on-screen presence and he really dives into his characters and it makes his characters pop and become like really realistic and really gritty and it's enjoyable in a handful of action set pieces that they have in the film uh, some set pieces with him swimming in water uh, and a prison fight set piece that was actually probably the highlight of the film uh, but that doesn't really last very long when you're looking at a film like this where there's not really much to say say good about it that is the highlight of the film by far. As has been said earlier, I would have much rather seen him as the next Superman. Instead, we got a watered-down Arnold in a poorly repurposed version of Commando. The purpose of this whole film seemed to really have been just to establish this new Tom Clancy franchise. Amazon's got now got the rights to the Tom Clancy brand in film, it appears to be, in film and in TV. Uh, they recently released their Jack Ryan series, which actually Jack Ryan series is not horrible. But uh, this film was, this film was pretty bad. And it feels like the only reason why this film was even made was to establish this character played by Michael B. Jordan and to establish his new elite team of special operatives that will be eventually become Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six being one of Tom Clancy's more infamous products. He wrote a book about it. There were a variety of video games being made. In summary, Michael B. Jordan does a wonderful job of acting in an incredibly generic, made-for-TV American action movie. And with that, the Tom Clancy legacy lives on. Thank you everybody for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe the video. And until then, I'll see you at the next reading. Peace. Thank you for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And please keep an eye out on the channel and my blog 
for content coming up in the next few weeks. In the meantime, please take care of yourself. Thank you.